Hi everyone, welcome to week six of health policy and health systems. This week we're covering chapter five. The chapter is really brief and there's no discussion assignment for this week. So we really want you to focus on developing outlines and doing some research in preparation for your uh, draft and final papers. So please use this week to do that. Um, this is a good time to, to really get yourself organized and start doing some writing on your papers and let us know if you have any questions as you uh, begin to encounter challenges when you're doing research and trying to outline uh, how you're going to write this paper and so on. And be sure to look at the example papers that we have online uh, to get a sense of, uh, or I'm uh, sorry, I should say paper. I think I, we have one example paper and if you need another one we can provide you with more, that's for sure. Um, but that will give you a sense of what we expect from you and what's required for e each of the papers because there is a particular format required. So look at the final papers, look at uh, the information. Uh, this um, diagram really does a good job of summarizing the entire chapter, I think. And uh, the chapter is essentially just giving you a sense of the landscape of various public health organizations. You might say, uh, you know, why do I need to know this? Um, well, it's good to just know uh, the various players in the public health system. So as we talk about policy, as we talk about health systems, uh, there are all these various organizations, uh, agencies, these entities out there that are uh, developing regulations that can impact uh, the research you do or uh, your health practice or if you're an MBA student, uh, they can impact um, uh, the how you run your uh, healthcare business. So it's important to actually know what what the landscape looks like. What what are these various organizations? What are their roles? So that you'll know who to um, give input to as regulations are being developed. So you'll know uh, where you should direct your comments uh, when you have problems with something uh, that's taking place that's uh, a federal uh, issue. Now there are a variety of organizations at the federal, state, sorry, global also, and local level uh, that you might need to consider. We're mainly talking about federal and global because, you know, we, we can't do everything and the book only focuses on those organizations. But just be aware that there are uh, a number of different agencies that you might interact with as you are uh, in some, working in some leadership position in, in healthcare. So here's a nice schematic of those. Uh, you clearly have those that focus on public health. You have the healthcare delivery system that's being impacted by those. And then there's there are these community and private organizations, and I would say also people uh, that are influential in everything that goes on. Just imagine a donor that gives money to a particular politician, but also donates to your hospital. They may somehow be influencing that politician to uh, fight for regulations and fight for statutes, new policies that can uh, somehow actually improve uh, the operations of your healthcare delivery system or that actually recognizes some problem you have. So even at the individual level people can have a lot of power and influence because we are a democracy and that's one of the one of the beauties of our system is that we all can have some input uh, if we actually work to uh, uh, in, engage in, in the system and actually work to provide our point of view. Alright, so the book goes through these various essential roles of health policy, sorry, of public health services. And one clearly is to sort of monitor the, pu the public and the, the population just to really see where everyone is. And if you look at the history of most departments of health throughout the country, you'll see that they they usually started with this feature. They usually started trying to figure out, well, who's dying? What are they dying from? Uh, you know, are, are children dying? How are they dying? Uh, and, and really just trying to keep track of what's going on. And that basic epidemiology really helped drive everything else. And it still does today. So it's really still an essential feature of a public health department. Now, the next step, of course, is really to figure out, well, what's causing these problems? What's happening? Why do we have the stats that we have? And we, that's a big part of public health, too. Um, uh, to then inform the public so you know what's going on, you know something about the cause, and then you got to tell the public, you know, keep them informed. There's a big movement these days towards more transparent government, really uh, throughout the nation, and I'm sure some of you are going to say, well, 
uh, my my local or state government isn't that transparent and I say yeah that may be true uh, but uh, they are I know in general working towards becoming more and more transparent and the internet is clearly a big driver and and, uh, and helps with doing that uh, the ability of people to uh, I get information out to the public uh, is much greater than it's ever been in human history and I think it will just continue to grow. Um, so uh, public health uh, services and public health organizations can focus on getting people together to become healthy, right? Uh, if you look at uh, Michelle Obama and the whole Let's Move uh, initiative, she's working with a variety of different public health organizations throughout the country to improve the uh, diet of uh, young people and to get young people moving more to make sure that schools are offering PE and so on and so you really the, all those various functions of those public health uh, organizations and entities are you have to tap into in order to actually uh, promote uh, and improve health. Policies of course are being developed by these organizations on a regular basis uh, those policies should come from uh, the citizens asking for something of the uh, legislature, either the local, federal, or, sorry, local, state, or federal level. Uh, but sometimes it, it just comes from things the legislatures or sorry, legislators are interested in themselves. For example, uh, some legislators have children who are autistic, and they are really focused on doing something about trying to prevent or treat or promote uh, health among uh, parents who have uh, or, or among autistic children but also interacting with those parents that take care of autistic children so they are often people who have certain causes that they take on and champion and try to develop policies as a result of those uh, things and as we talked about before uh, these agencies can uh, enforce laws through a variety of codes some of which you guys are um, are familiar with for sure uh, you're aware that organiz there are these entities out there that try to make sure our food is safe for example right uh, every restaurant you go to hopefully has been inspected by the public health department and that's one of those really important roles of public health uh, that that is really taken for granted in this country because we don't we don't have a lot of people dying from uh, problems with their food in this country but that is a problem in some other countries that don't have adequate public health systems so don't take those things for granted um, fluoridation, fluoridation uh, I'm saying that completely wrong fluoridation of our water and chlorination of our water uh, is something that protects us uh, more than you know and there are plenty of people dying from cholera and other diseases throughout the country just because their water supply is bad so um, and just realize that you know good sanitation and uh, you know looking at pests and all those things are still a part of public health and will always be a part of uh, the uh, you know goals and the uh, uh, initiatives that are coming from public health departments all right so um, then this next role is uh, trying to help people really get the services that they need and that that's sort of embedded in really some of those other things uh, if you're trying to promote health then people might ask well you know how do I do what you're telling me to do how do I get healthy food well you know there's this WIC program and you can use WIC to uh, which is stands for women's infants and children it's a program that helps uh, women's w poor women who have children to access fresh vegetables and fruits and, and dairy products that infants need to for proper brain development, uh, proper growth, uh, those kind of programs uh, people would be told about if they interacted with the uh, public health system. All right. Um, another role is just to make sure that we have licensed professionals and that that all of you are aware of and without licensed professionals then we have people running around willy-nilly doing all kinds of things and uh, even with uh, licensing processes we still have that sometimes uh, but uh, now we definitely have more regulation of how people are practicing various health fields uh, than we did in the past all right and so once you do all those things you got to evaluate them and make sure they're working and this is an area where I'd say many public health systems struggle uh, they have a hard time evaluating themselves in particular because their the regime changes so often so let's say uh, President Obama loses then you're gonna have a whole new group of people coming in who are going to take over the healthcare system so 
for the last couple of years, we've been trying to implement the Affordable Care Act. And if Romney wins, uh, there's a potential that he'll, if, if uh, he has uh, agreement from uh, the Senate and the House, he may try to completely redo all these things and, and get rid of lots of things that uh, administrators have been working on for the last two years. And that's a bit, you know, uh, confusing, right? Uh, we don't have clear goals that our politicians across party lines agree to uh, when it comes to health care. And if you kind of have this going back and forth, it's really hard to figure out what's working, what's not working, because you never get enough time to really assess uh, what's taking place. Um, and so, so you that that's one reason you really have to engage in bipartisan policy making, especially with something as important as health care. And that wasn't done well by the Obama administration. And so, uh, so you could have uh, Romney come in and really redo the entire process if he wins, and it could really be discombobulating for a lot of people. Um, so research, research is important to also figure out what's going on, and also I. I, I would say that this is one of the aspects of public health that actually stimulates jobs too. It's really an underrated aspect of the public health system is that we, the public health system uh, generates new technologies and because of those new technologies companies are formed, right? So uh, companies are formed uh, to provide various goods and services that focus on health to the population because they know there's a good reimbursement model there coming from insurers and it's it, it, many companies many uh, cities have built themselves on the uh, notion that biotechnology can yield money uh, you see throughout the country a number of uh, cities are trying to create biotech centers because they know as the population continues to age as we have more and more people around the world there are going to be there's going to be greater need greater demand for healthcare products uh, of all types over over the counter products prescription products and so on devices and all that so um, this is really an area where where public health helps stimulate the economy, and I don't think we hear enough from politicians or government agencies with regards to how that actually takes place. But that sh really deserves more attention. I just want to add to you guys. Okay, so uh, the book also mentions a number of federal agencies that are linked to the Department of Health and Human Services. Uh, see, and, and these agencies have the various roles uh, that the book talks about for. Uh, as being essential to uh, public health services. So CDC, of course, you know, goes out there and figures out what's going on. You know, what are people dying from? What's hurting people? Uh, and, and they report it and they analyze it and they try to find causes and so on. Uh, toxic substances does something similarly. Uh, they also warn people. CDC warns people, too, of things that may be going wrong. The FDA also uh, warns people of things that uh, may harm them. Uh, when there's some outbreak of certain disease associated with food, people know about our drugs that are recalled, the public is informed. NIH is really focused on research and again I'd say that they stimulate innovation and that's really a, an important role. They're focused on improving the public's health but they're also innovating at the same time and they are a source of job creation for our country. Um, the FDA is really about protecting you, right? So it's another one of those roles where they're trying to make sure that the things that come out are approved and are safe for the public so people are harmed. Um, HRSA is fairly interesting but it's because it's focused on uh, connecting people to resources and we talked about that before that that's one of the roles of public health services so HRSA says well look here here's the human capital we have in place here are the various health professionals that we have around and here's the need we have in the society and are these things matching up you know are we getting out the work are we creating the workforce that we need so HRSA is concerned about things like uh, the education of nurses or med techs or so on, uh, various types of healthcare professionals out there. Uh, are people with certain diseases like HIV AIDS getting the care that they need? All right, Agency for Healthcare Research and Quality is also focused on research, but the research they focus on is called health services research. And that research tends to focus on uh, improving the quality of care, access to care, and so on. Uh, SAMHSA is somewhat self-explanatory. It's, it's really focused on the notion that uh, substance abuse and mental health uh, have very unique challenging issues and they really deserve their own agency and their own attention and, and all of you I think uh, have a good understanding of, uh, 
of, of why that's probably the case uh, because of how challenging it is to deal with both of these issues and how little we really know about how to um, stop someone and pre prevent substance abuse and stop someone who is already a substance abuser and also to uh, deal with mental health problems. These are clearly some of the greatest challenges that uh, the human species faces. Uh, Indian Health Service is is really the result of our unique history, uh, our, our nation's unique history with uh, American Indian tribes. So this is essentially an agreement between the U.S. government and um, American Indian tribes that the U.S. government will pay for uh, basic health care uh, for American Indians. And so there are hospitals uh, throughout the country, clinics and so on, that are focused on providing care to these tribes. Now, they are criticized as not being uh, in the best shape that they could be in, and many of them need improvement, but they are at least a step in an effort towards trying to provide some minimum level of health care uh, to American Indians. And clearly not all American Indians use the Indian Health Service. They mainly focus on Indians who are on our reservations. Um, so globally uh, there's the World Health Organization the imp important organization for you to know about within the World Health Organization is PAHO and that stands for Pan American Health Organization that's the one that covers the US so it covers North and South America and these organizations are really all about how do you coordinate the efforts of various countries with regards to public health how do you standardize data on mortality for example so that we can see what the mortality is from various diseases throughout the world and really get a sense of whether we're making progress not only within our countries but as an entire human species regardless of where we live all right um, so th there are other organizations like that are also tied to the UN uh, like UNICEF and UNAIDS that the book mentions uh, I just wanted to point out that UNICEF does much more than vaccinations the book talks about that uh, but there's way more that UNICEF focuses on and these organizations are fairly interesting because you might see them out on the street asking you to donate money to them you might say well why are they asking me to donate money if they're tied to the United Nations and they clearly get some funding but it turns out that a number of their initiatives uh, require additional funding beyond what the UN provides and so they actually do raise money on their own uh, too as the book points out they have limited financing um, and then there's these various organizations like the World Bank that the book mentions mainly because these organizations help finance um, various public health efforts and I would throw in here too that you would actually have to think about uh, large organizations large uh, sorry large foundations like the Gates Foundation now because the Gates Foundation is giving more money than many countries are to healthcare uh, public health uh, initiatives throughout the world, especially with regards to vaccines. A number of people are alive today, millions of people are alive today because of the Gates Foundation. And I don't think we can um, uh, ever uh, overstate just how significant the Gates Foundation has been in uh, improving the health of a number of people in developing countries and also in the U.S. They really have Bill Gates, through Bill Gates' generosity, a number of uh, poor people have and people who are in tough situations for a variety of reasons have been able to uh, survive and, and live uh, and thrive. All right. Uh, then there are organizations like USAID which is really a, just a government agency uh, that focuses on providing aid to countries from the US. So this is the US you know gathers taxpayer dollars and they spend some of it on humanitarian efforts it's less than one percent of our uh, federal budget for sure it's not a lot of money uh, but we do spend some time engaging in humanitarian efforts and uh, much of that money comes from the USAID so something called PEPFAR um, which is a plan that was started by President Bush to uh, decrease the number of people throughout the world with HIV and AIDS and also people suffering from malaria and some other diseases. Uh, that, that comes from USAID and they administer that program. All right, uh, the book, just quickly, the book talks about uh, community-oriented primary care and this really falls under the branch of um, community-based uh, uh, community-based participatory research, sorry. Uh, so th this is 
this is also referred to as CBPR. Uh, it's an acronym you don't need to know. Um, but it, it's really focused on changing the model for how we provide care and also changing the model for how we do research on people in our country. Um, so the goal is to try to make research and try to make care more focused on what the community needs. So many times uh, when we engage in research projects, researchers just come up with ideas based on the literature, but the ideas really don't have any relevance to the community or the ideas can't function beyond a research project. And that's really a waste of dollars when you think about it, especially when so much of the research is done by especially academics is funded by the federal government or by taxpayers donating money uh, to various foundations. So why would we want researchers to engage in work that really has no true relevance to the community and really sometimes can be so esoteric that it uh, it's just not, it really shouldn't be funded. Uh, it may be a great idea, may push the field forward a little bit, but you know, at the end of the day, it, it can't translate into uh, improving the community's health. And so the question arises as to why do that uh, and can we change the model? So the new model that has been tossed around is to really focus on what the community needs first, try to make the community's priorities are the researcher's priorities or the care provider's priorities. So if you're providing care in a particular uh, population, you should know, well, what is that population suffering from the most? Uh, that's relevant to your field, of course. So if you're a physical therapist, you might say, well, you know, what kind of um, mechanical problems are people suffering from? Lower back pain or foot injuries? What kind of work do they do? And so that you get a sense of who your community is and who you're serving, you try to cater your care uh, towards the needs that those individuals do, and you, you evaluate yourself over time. All right. So that's it for this time. Thanks for listening. Have a good week.